Greetings, and what's up all my arcade and modding peoples, I'm technically not a technician, and in today's video, I'll show you how I did the cable management on the two guns that go to my arcade 1UP T2 arcade cab. This mod is very easy, it gives us a clean look, and it removes the trip hazard that is present because of the stock cab cabling. However, before we begin, I need to remind you that this video is for educational purposes only, and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any video or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. With this simple hardware modification we'll be able to hide the cables to both the player 1 and 2 controls. It's important to say that there's more than one way to achieve this goal, however, today I'll be reviewing how I've chosen to go about my mod, I'll speak to the parts I've picked for this mod, and I'll talk as to why I've picked those parts. The parts that I'll be using for today's T2 modification are a set of rubber grommets to protect the cabling from the hard plastic, 8 ounce youth batting weights to provide a small amount of pull to help the cables retract, and to cover the existing cabling exit holes, I'll be using two 5 8 inch plastic blank hole plugs. As far as tools, we'll only need a few items. We'll need a drill, and a few drill bits to make two holes for our new cables to pass through. I'll be using a Dewalt drill for this, a Dewalt half-inch bit to start my hole, and a step bit to get the girth needed for fitting my grommets. I'd also recommend using a Phillips head screwdriver with a magnetic tip. This will help when removing and reinstalling out control holsters. To help facilitate your part and tool appropriation, I'll be placing affiliate links to each in the description, this action will serve a dual purpose. First using these links will help support the channel, and I wish to say thank you for any support you chose to provide. However, this is also a great way to save time when hunting for the parts, and to know you have the right part the very first time. With our tools and the needed hardware in hand, let's get started with this project and give this T2 cab a clean look. The first thing we need to do is very simple. All we must do is unplug both of our guns, and when we are done we can set him off to the side, and get to work on our control deck. After we've disconnected the cabling and removed our firearms from the T2 cab, we'll wish to use the Phillips head screwdriver with our magical magnetic tip and remove the four screws in each corner that hold our sidearm holsters in place. After you've removed the first holster, place it in a safe place off to the side with the screws so they don't get lost. Once we've removed the player 1 holster, we'll need to again take our magnetic tipped Phillips head screwdriver and do the same to the player 2 holster. We'll also need to place this holster to the side in a safe area with the screws keeping them from getting lost. With both the firing arms and holsters disconnected, we can begin removing the four screws from the four corners of our control deck. These four screws should come out with ease. Please remember not to force these out, and of course, once you have them removed, place them off to the side in a safe place. Once the four screws are removed, we'll be able to remove the control deck. However, you will need to disconnect the two cables that link the PCB board and the control deck. One of which will be a USB cable, with the second being a ribbon cable. You'll also have a third cable that powers the control deck and originates from the power supply. This cable will also need to be disconnected before the deck can be safely removed. After removing the stock hardware, let's move to our work area. I'll be placing an old bath towel down over the area we'll be working from. This way, I don't damage any of the hardware. The first items that we'll be modifying will be both of the gun holsters that rest on our control deck. I'll be adding a rubber grommet for the gun cables to pass through on each of the holsters. The idea is that the grommets will provide a protective barrier between the cables and the hard plastic so that there is no damage to the cables when rubbing the side walls of the hole. Please keep in mind that many will feel that this is an optional step. I'm doing so as this is a standard practice in the vertical that I work in, and I understand that over time, cabling will become damaged if the proper precautions aren't taken. The drill bit just fell out of my drill. Let's call this a blooper, and I hope the guys at work don't see it. If they do, they'll give me hell about it, but I get to remind them that technically, I'm not a technician. In order for us to begin the process of adding this wire path and grommet, I will first begin by drilling a hole in both of the holsters using this half-inch drill bit. It will be necessary for me to enlarge the hole because the grommets have an interior diameter of half an inch, but the grommets will have a slightly bigger diameter on the outside. 
After making our initial penetration, we'll be moving on to the step bit. For those of you unfamiliar with a step bit, it's basically a cone-shaped bit with a stair-step profile that allows you to drill holes of various sizes on one single drill bit. As you drill deeper with the step bit, the larger your hole will become. After we've placed the step bit on our drill, we use the bit to expand the girth of our hole so that it will be able to accept the grommet we'll be using to protect our cabling as it rubs the sides of our holster. The grommet will be a tight fit, and you'll need to make sure there is no debris in the way when making the fitting. Please make sure you do not remove too much material from the holster when making your hole, as it is very easy to remove plastic. However, it is a pain in the butt to add it back. If done as I have, the grommet will be a tight fit. In fact, I needed to use a flat head screwdriver to press the sides of the grommet into the sides of the hole for the best fit. After pressing the sides in, I now have a cable passage that will allow me to pass the largest part of my cabling through this hole and protect the cabling from any damage caused by friction. On the second unit, we'll need to do as we've done on the first unit. We'll begin by using the step bit, and we'll expand the hole so that it will be able to accept the grommet. Once everything is ready, remove any leftover bits of debris from the hole and insert the grommet by pressing its sides into the sides of the hole with the flat head screwdriver. I also feel as if this is a great time to ask for your support in helping me beat the YouTube algorithm and analytics. You can do this by liking this video, maybe sharing it with a friend, or on your social media. Please keep in mind that I love reading and answering comments, as it is a ton of fun interacting with you, and if you've not done so yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. These are all small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world. Thank you. I'll next simply clean up my workspace, but not before I clean up the last of the debris left in the holes that we'll be using as a cable pass. I'm going to inform you of this, but we'll skip the cleanup to help save time. After cleaning any excess debris away from our two holes and cleaning up our working environment, it's time to turn our attention from the holsters to the modifications we need on our control deck. The basic idea here is to reroute the cabling from the stock holes to the holes we installed into our two holsters. To start the process, I'll be removing the protective deck plate that is on the bottom of the control deck. This protective plate keeps our control PCB safe from anything that may damage it. Basically, at this step, we'll need to remove the USB cables from the control PCB, and we'll need to remove the two clips next to the holes that hold the cables in place. Removing the clips can be done by using a flat head screwdriver and applying pressure to the clip in such a way that you force the clip to push away from the cabling that it is securing at the site of the hole. We'll now reroute the USB cables from the stock T2 cabs holes, and we'll place the protective deck plate back in place. This is really easy to do, and takes no time at all. However, it's important to point out that each of the cables does have a knuckle attached to it, and you should be sure to make sure all of the cabling's knuckles are set into the notches on the deck. Verifying that each knuckle is in place will help make sure the cabling stays in place and will not pull from the PCB board. Let's grab the last two items of hardware that we'll be adding to this mod. One is again the 8-ounce youth batting weights that will provide some pull for our cabling to guide it back into our holster's holes, and the other will be the plastic blank hole plugs. I've picked these hole plugs as they fit the stock holes perfectly and require no modifications to work with our cab. As far as the plugs, we've found a great out-of-the-box solution that slips right in. For our next egregious modification, I'll grab the Red Player 2 control, and we'll route the cabling from that gun into the hole that we've made on our holster, then add our grommet to protect our cabling from the hard plastic hole on our holster and protect the cabling from the friction of inserting and removing the controllers, and we'll start the process of reinstalling the holsters into the control deck. The Red Player 2 controller is the first controller I've done, so there is a little bit of trial and error in this process. However, it seems that with little effort, I was able to achieve our goal without any major issues. After getting everything in place, we need to screw our Red Player 2 holster in. This is where the magnetic tips on the screwdrivers become very important. With a magnetic tip, we still have to be very steady when inserting the two back screws into the holes that face the cab's monitor. Those two screw holes are very deep, and if we don't hold our jaws just right, you will have issues inserting those two screws in. If you don't have a magnetic tip on your screwdriver, well, you're just kinda screwed then. After finishing up the Red Player 2 controller, we'll move over to the Blue Player 1 controller. Because this is the second one that we've set up, this one will go in easier. I'll be doing the same as I did for the Red Player 2 controller on this Blue controller. 
Basically, I'll run the gun's cabling into the hole. We'll then insert the rubber grommet over the cable and then insert the grommet into the hole, using my flat tip screwdriver to push the grommet into place, giving it a solid, secure seat in the hole. Did you see that? I'm guessing not, so I'm going to slow this part down a ton. Yap, that's correct, I lost a screw. Fun fact, I forgot all about that single screw until editing this video, and I've still not recovered it. We'll call this blooper number 2. With that blooper out of the way, we'll secure the remaining 3 screws that we have, and we'll move on to finish up our project. I believe it is safe to say that this was the largest issue we've faced when building this mod, and if this is the biggest issue we've had, then I think we can say that we've had an easy ride on this modification. It is now time to add the 8 ounce youth batting weights to the cabling. I picked these style weights as the center hole is very large and the cable shouldn't have any issues with passing through the given space. I also felt that 8 ounces would be a solid weight, giving the right amount of pull to help retract the cabling back into the cab without providing an uncomfortable amount of force, keeping us from controlling our firearms. I also like that these weights have a nice, smooth plastic coating. I think that this smooth coating will aid in preventing damage to the cabling from any friction between the cables and the weights. And just like that, we now have the modifications done to our control deck, and our modified deck is ready to be reinstalled back into our T2 cab. I feel as if it looks great, but the big question is, how well will these modifications work? To answer that fun question, we'll move back to the cab, and we'll begin reinstalling the deck. This is just as easy as removing the deck was. However, we'll be doing this action in the reverse steps of uninstalling it. First, we'll reattach all three of the cables that connect the controller PCB with the main system PCB. This will be one ribbon cable, one USB cable, and one cable that provides power to the controller PCB and the two guns. Reattaching the cabling is the hardest part, as the cables don't give you much room for negotiation when navigating the cab's interior space. Our last step in this mod will be to add the last four screws that hold the control deck to the cab. Always remember not to over-tighten the screws holding your deck, and for those of you that are keeping a close eye and you've noticed, I do not have a protective plexiglass cover, there is a reason for that, my cab is kind of a Frankenstein cab and was made from a few scraps found in the community and off of Facebook market. With that in mind, thank you again, Mark. You kick butt sir, my cab, and none of these mods would be possible without your help and the parts you donated to the channel. If you'd like to learn more about how I got my cab, I'll be sure to link to its story in this video and in the description. If you've noticed that I'm playing Area 51 and not T2 and you'd like to learn more, you can also find the link to that video in those same areas. I'd like to say that this mod is very easy to do. It makes the cab look great, and it keeps the cables out of the way. For those of you who are still here, I do want to say thank you for checking out the video. I do hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, please remember to like this video and maybe share it with a friend or on your social media. If you've not done so yet, please consider subscribing to the channel. All of these are only small clicks of the mouse for you, but to this small channel, those small clicks mean the world. Thank you.